What's up guys, it's me Tommy. So I've noticed that pocket RGB lights have been getting super popular lately. So we've got the Aperture MC, Suit Photos, LED Video Light, Falcon Eyes, Pocket F7, the Bowling P1, and the Pilotfly Atom Cube RX1. Five different RGB WW lights. So of course, in my mind, when there's a bunch of different companies making the same kind of product, the question that I start to ask is, which one's the best value and which one would I buy if I needed to buy a pocket video light? So I need to compare them, but they all have different features, different accessories, different price points. So to determine which of these is the best pocket video light and to save you hours of watching reviews and determining which one you should buy, I wrote out my own little grading scale of what I think is gonna be the most important deciding factors of value for each of these. And I'm gonna compare all of them against that as a grading scale. So the first thing we should do is a durability test. Yeah, I'm not actually gonna throw all these against the wall, but the Bowling P1 is disqualified from the competition. So I tried to charge the Bowling P1 to full, and by the time it got to full, it died. I don't know if the battery or the electronics shorted out or whatever, but it's it just doesn't work anymore. And so I'm usually pretty generous when it comes to products that I'm reviewing. Uh, you know, sometimes the review units have manufactured defects or they're pre-production or whatever. So I sent it back and I got another one, and then I charged this one to full on a separate outlet, not even using the same computer, and that one died too. You know, I actually did a review of the Bowling P1 and I really liked it, I was really impressed with it. It's just after a few times of charging it to full, it just died. So it's really sad. I can't recommend anyone buy this product. It's happened to two separate units. So let's move on with the competition and let's get into price. So the Aperture MC comes in tied for cheapest at $109 with the Suit Photo LED pocket light. Then we have the Falcon Eyes F7 coming in at $120, followed by the Pilotfly Atom Cube RX1 in last at $169. So it is significantly more expensive than the rest of the pocket lights. Next, we're gonna measure the output with my spectrometer, the UPR Tech CV600. We're gonna measure both the output from color and from white. Starting with the Aperture MC over here. What's up guys, it's your boy Tommy from Post Production, and I was about to just put in a two minute clip of me measuring light with a meter, and it was super freaking boring. So instead, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. These measurements were all taken one meter away at 100% power output, and the lights were set to 5600 Kelvin. You can see Aperture is the least bright. Suit Photo is about two and a half times brighter than Aperture, Pilotfly is about three times brighter than Aperture, and Falcon Eyes is three and a half times brighter. When you're looking at output, for white light. So the Falcon Eyes gets the point for white light output, but these are RGB pocket lights, so you need to look at the RGB output as well. I measured the red LEDs at full power, Aperture is at 41 lux, Suit Photo is at 66, Falcon Eyes at 75, and Pilotfly RX1 is at 131 lux, over three times brighter than Aperture's light. So Pilotfly gets the RGB output point. And as far as color accuracy, they were all set to 5600 Kelvin, uh, they're all pretty close except for suit photo was way off so suit photo gets minus a point for that and then for color quality both aperture and falcon eyes were very high color quality and they get a point for that now we're going to get into something a little bit more practical which might actually help you make a decision if you're not a scientist here my camera is set to 5600 kelvin and this is where you can really see that color quality color intensity and color accuracy all matter a ton the aperture is kind of dim but very accurate and the suit photo is not accurate at all. And this is what it looks like in red. Here you can really see that the pilot fly is shining super bright. There you go. Sometimes showing is better than telling. And they're all flicker free except for the pilot fly RX1 which did not pass the flicker test if you are doing super high speed like 1000 frames per second. But it did pass it in RGB mode. Everything else completely passed the flicker test, so just something to consider. Pilot Fly gets minus a point for failing one of the flicker tests. As far as build quality is concerned, the Aperture MC is mostly plastic and is the lightest weight of the of the group of lights, but it's also the only light that has no rattle when you shake it. This is the suit photo. It's mostly plastic uh, feeling. I think the outside might be metal, but it feels kind of cheap. Uh, of course, it has a little rattle when you shake it and it just has buttons. It's got a cold shoe in case you wanted to mount something to the light. A couple of mounting points. The aperture also has 
a nice mounting point, and of course the magnets built in. The Falcon Eyes Pocket Light F7 is kind of like the in-between build quality. It's all metal and it's nice and solid. It also still has a rattle though when you shake it, and it's got that kind of weird mushy button that's also a rocker. I don't know how I feel about those buttons, but a lot of lights are adopting it now. Cheap LCD screen on the back to display what's happening with the light. I'd say the build quality on the Pocket Light F7 is between the middle and high end of build quality. The Falcon Eyes Pocket Light F7 also has magnets built into the back, just like Aperture, so you can mount it to things that are made of metal. The Pilotfly Atom Cube RX1 has the, I'd say the best build quality of the bunch. It's all solid metal, feels very solid, even though there's a little bit of a rattling when you shake it. I mean, you're not often violently shaking your lights to hear them rattle. Uh, it looks the nicest and overall, I think they have the best build quality of all the lights. So Pilot Fly gets the point for build quality. The next category is onboard user interface. And what I mean by that is buttons and switches and things. Aperture has a tactile clicking dedicated power switch, which I like. And then it has a dial that also acts as a button. So if you single tap it, you cycle through options. If you hold it down, you get a list of things to pick from, and then you can scroll to either select hue, saturation, intensity, or whatever. That's, that's what you use to select different options. So their interface is decent. It's significantly better than what we've got with Suit Photo. Suit Photo has a power button that you have to hold down for a few seconds to turn it on or to turn it off and you single tap that power button to switch between modes and scenes. But the most frustrating thing about their interface is when you're using an RGB light, you probably want to use it in hue saturation intensity mode. Uh, when you're trying to pick a color, it cycles through colors very, very slowly or very, very, very quickly. And it cycles through 1,600 different options. Say I just wanted the color to be red, which is uh, hue zero. I'm at 1481 now, 1482, 83, 84. Let's just hold it down for a second. I'm already at 150. It just goes too fast. So I hate it. And it's got the worst user interface ever. Falcon Eyes Pocket Light F7. It's got a on off button that you hold down for a few seconds to turn it on or off. And then that button acts to switch between the different modes when you single tap it. And then it has a dedicated intensity dial, which I really appreciate. Which doesn't seem to do anything in scene mode, but it does in CCT mode and in hue saturation intensity mode, which is where I would most often be using it. Then it also has a rocker that acts as a button to switch between hue and saturation in RGB mode. So it's a simple interface, but it works and it's got that dedicated intensity dial so the interface is a good interface. The interface, I'd say, because of that dedicated intensity dial is slightly better than Aperture's. But the Pilotfly Atom Cube RX1 has the absolute best user interface of all these. It's got a tactile, dedicated on-off switch. It's got the dedicated intensity dial. Then it also has a rocker button thing and a button to switch between different modes and selecting things. So it's got the most buttons and it's the easiest to set into the mode that you want it to be in based on those buttons. So the pilot fly gets the point for best user interface. And I'm actually gonna subtract a point from suit photo for their awful interface. This category is magnets. Now being that the only two lights that I have that have magnets in them are the Aperture MC and the Falcon Eyes Pocket Light F7, Aperture is going to get two points for magnets and the F7 only gets one point for magnets because Aperture is able to attach to more things because it's such a lightweight light. Their integration of magnets is better. They can hold more weight in more directions and attach to more things. While I appreciate the Falcon Eyes has magnets and it can attach to flat surfaces like that, see? It cannot attach to the same things that the Aperture one can because it's too heavy and it needs more surface area to attach. So it only gets one point for magnets. Where are we? There we are. Next category is remote or app controls. Now, you might already know that Aperture has released their own app, Citus Link which is great and it works with a lot of their upcoming lights and works with the Aperture MC. So obviously Aperture gets a point for having the wireless app. 
but the Atom Cube RX1 is also app controllable. You can also attach as many lights as you want into groups, control them individually, and select colors and scenes. So Pilotfly also gets a point for having an app, and both their apps are really good. I'd say Aperture's app is a little bit more advanced and has slightly more features built into it, um, but they're both great apps. They both work wonderful, so they both get the point. Next category is size, and Aperture gets the point for being the smallest light. Sometimes you need a really small light, and these all, all the other lights are a little bit bigger, almost as big as an iPhone. For example, in the video I did with Josh Yeo over at Make Art Now, that B-roll sequence we did, uh, we, had a, we had an MC in the gas mask, and that only would have worked with the MC. It wouldn't have worked with any of these other lights. So Aperture definitely gets a solid point for size. What's cool is we can pop in this little Aperture light inside the mask and add just like a, a pop of like some crazy, I don't know, I feel like maybe it activates the, the sound effect. I don't know, let's try it. Oh, if you haven't seen that video, you need to go watch it now. It was awesome. Next category is accessories. Aperture comes with this nice diffusion that lets you diffuse and kind of modify your light source, which is really nice. It also comes with a nice little carrying case and a little kind of carabiner on it and a couple of sticky pads. There's also uh, the wireless charging briefcase available to charge and transport all your MCs, which is awesome. I don't have that briefcase yet, but it is awesome and I want one. The suit photo pocket video light really doesn't have much going on in the way of accessories. It comes with this kind of big carrying case and a little quarter 20 mount but really there's not much going on with that. The Falcon Eyes Pocket Light F7 comes with a really unique set of accessories. It's got its own little diffuser, and yes, it's not just on top of the light. It is, it does stick out a little bit, so it gives you a little bit of distance between the source of light and the diffusion, so you have a little bit of space in there, so it works better as a diffuser. What I'm much more interested in is this rubber black honeycomb grid, which you can use to control your light. For example, without the grid, I've got this much light, but if I needed to control this light source a little bit, I throw that grid on there. I've got a much more controlled light source, which modifiers and control are so important for lighting and accessories. Um, this is the only pocket light I've seen that has a grid or comes with a grid even. So very, very interesting. Um, definitely one of the most useful pocket video lights and if you don't have one, I could see you buying the Falcon Eyes F7 just to use it with their grid. That is awesome. And finally, Pilotfly Atom Cube RX1 has some really interesting accessories. It's got this little L bracket, which is kind of similar to the Bowling P1s. It's just, uh, you can attach it and detach it with this little quarter 20 mount. You can put it on a couple of different mounting points and you know, position your light in any which way. What I'm really interested in are these little things they sell for 20 bucks called the Magic Cubes. And if you're looking at investing in lights and you're considering a pocket light or a light panel or something, this is where the Atom Cube RX1 really, really shines. If you get a second Pilotfly Atom Cube RX1, you wanna pick one of these up. The light has these two little holes in the corner that attach to these cubes. The Magic Cube, attaches these two lights to each other to make a bigger light or for different effects. And because they have grouping built into their light, obviously you can control the lights independently, just like with the Aperture light, but Aperture doesn't have the ability to attach their lights like this. Control them together, or you can just make it a, a big white panel. There we go. We've got two of their lights now operating as a single light, so we have a big light panel. You can make a light panel of any dimension based on how many of these atom cubes you buy. I mean, this is the only pocket light that actually allows you to do something like that. So that in combination with their three hours of battery life is a really, really sweet combo. Atom Cube RX1 gets two points for their innovative approach to attaching lights together to create bigger panels. Falcon Eyes being the only one that sells a honeycomb grid, they get two points. Aperture for their wireless charging case, they get one point. And Sufoto, they get zero points. 
Oh, uh, one more one more point needs to be subtracted from Aperture though for availability because their lights are constantly on back order. It's hard to get your hands on these. Everybody likes them and wants them, but you gotta wait. So minus a point. I almost forgot battery life, which is super important. Aperture comes in at 100 minutes of runtime at full power. The Falcon Eyes F7 comes in at an hour and a half at full power. And both the Suit Photo and the Pilot Fly Atom Cube RX1 come in at three hours of runtime, so they both get a point for battery life. All right, let's total everything up. So after all that, it looks like most of these lights are just a pretty good value with exception of Suit Photo. I mean, it just falls short in so many areas. Aperture's the best value, it's also the least bright, and Suit Photo is the worst value. It costs the same as Aperture, you get so much more out of the Aperture light, and if you need more output, you can go with Falcon Eyes for 10 more dollars. Do you need to be able to control your light wirelessly? I mean, it's gonna come down to personal bias, it's gonna come down to what you want. Now, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more permanent and has a little bit more output, you might you might take a look at this GVM panel. Uh, my buddy Gerald and Dunn did an excellent review of it. I will be reviewing it at some point in the near future costs just a little bit more than all of these, or if you were gonna get two pocket lights, it'll cost the same amount as that. And it's something that you would leave plugged into your wall or you could use two NPF batteries. And it has more output than any of these pocket lights. Um, I'll have a link to a really good review by Gerald and Dunn in the description. Uh, I will be reviewing it at some point in the near future, but that's not on the docket this second. The next light that I'm reviewing is the Velvet Light Evo 1. It is a one by one panel super bright, super powerful, um, V-mount battery, waterproof, so many cool things going on with this light. And I'm gonna be reviewing that over the next few weeks. And I'm not asking for money or anything, but if you like this video, just hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up, super appreciate it. If you wanted to take a look at or buy any of these lights, there's links to all of them in the description of this video. This video wasn't sponsored. All these companies sent out all these lights for me to review. I didn't pay for them, but I don't have any personal, personal bias towards any of them. I just really like lights and I just want to find the best ones. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.